Welcome to all who have no church home, want to follow Christ, have doubts, or do not believe. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers and fathers and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, cultures, abilities, gender and relational identities, to old and young, to believers and questioners, and welcome to questioning believers. Welcome to those who are watching this from around the corner or from across the globe. We welcome everyone this morning and invite you to live with God's peace, love, and justice. Today is Sunday, November 8th, 2020, and we are so happy that you decided to join us for worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 78, verses 1 to 7. Hear now these words. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and know that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and the Lord's might and the wonders that God has done. God established the decree of Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which the Lord commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep the commandments. This is the word of God for the people of God. We now come to the time in our service where we go before God in prayer. We lift up our prayers of petition as well as our prayers of um, joy and celebration to God. When we gather in person, we have the opportunity to be able to raise our hands and share our prayer concerns with those gathered together in one space. And we can agree with one another in prayer for the needs amongst our congregation. But since we are unable to do that in person, since we worship together in unity, but not necessarily in the same space, we cannot raise our hand and have people just share their prayer requests. So as I pray, I will leave time of silences so that you can lift up your prayers together. And we together gather who are watching and who are worshiping together will agree in spirit with the request of the honor. In that spirit, let us go before God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we come before you this morning, some with sorrow on our hearts and some with joy on our hearts, some concerned about personal aspects, some relieved that prayers have been answered. Some of us are coming before you with sickness in our bodies. Some of us are coming before you having been healed from sicknesses in our bodies. God, we know that in whichever capacity we come before you in, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are your children, created in your image. And that whether they are burdens that we need to lay at your feet or celebrations that we raise up in joy to you, we know you know what's on our hearts every step of the way, every moment of the day. So now, God, we come before you and we lift up to you our prayers. We lift them up to you knowing that as our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you hear the prayers and know the prayers on our hearts. And we know that you will answer them in your time and in your way. We are thankful, God, that we serve a God who loves each of us so profoundly. That we don't worship a God that is so far off in the universe that has nothing to do with us. A God that is so disconnected from us, but that we worship a God who lives among us who lives in our hearts, in our minds, and in our spirits, who takes an interest in our lives, 
who holds us in times of struggle and dances with us in times of celebration. We serve a living God, oh God. We serve you and know that you have been alive since the beginning of time and you will be alive forever, caring for us, holding us, walking with us on this journey we call life. And so now, in spirit and in truth, we raise up to you our prayers. We pray, O oh God, for those who are struggling, for those that we know, or even ourselves, who are struggling for whatever reason, whether it be emotionally struggling because of things that are going on in our life, or financial struggles, or struggles with our housing, or any other thing. We lift this up to you, God. We ask, God, that you would ease the burdens on our heart, that you would direct our paths, that you would be that lamp that would shine on the pathway to show us your way. We lift up those to, in our lives and ourselves who are struggling. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift up those among us who are ill, undergoing treatments, discerning next steps in their treatments, whatever the case may be. God, we know you are the great physician. We know that you do heal us in body and soul. So we pray for healing in whatever capacity that may be in. God, we pray for people who have just been diagnosed with new illnesses, and we pray for people who have been living with their diagnoses for years. We pray for the medical teams who help treat. We pray for the families who are supporting them. We lift up all those among us and in our lives who are ill and needing healing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift up a prayer of thanks to you for those who have been healed whether it is from um, just uh, a common cold or whether it's been from cancer. God, there's so much healing that takes place and we are so thankful for medical science. We are so thankful for the science that is able to bring about the medications and the treatments that heal our bodies. And so we lift up to you a word of thanks for all of the healings, for the people among us who have been healed and for all the uh, great healings that you among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, in the world and in this nation today, we are struggling with a pandemic that is out of control. And so, God, we pray for all of those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19, who are hospitalized with it, and who are may or may not be God, we pray that they would feel your presence in your life at this time. We pray, God, that they would feel a sense of peace and place their trust in you, that regardless of what happens, they are your children and you're holding them in the palm of your hand. We pray for the medical teams and all those who put themselves at risk every day treating those who are ill with this, with this virus. God, we ask of hedge of protection around them, and we thank you, God, for the work that they do. We lift up all those who are struggling with COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for the families of those who have died from this uh, disease, from this virus. May your peace wrap them and surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for our nation. We have had an election this week, and a new president-elect has been called. We pray for peace. We pray for unity in this country that seems so far off from reality. God, give us each the strength and the wisdom to do our part to live in unity with one another. In the book of Romans, it tells us that
that as far as it depends on each of us, let us live peaceably one with another. So God, give us the strength and the wisdom to do just that. Guide this nation, guide the leaders of this nation for a peaceful transition of power, and guide all the leaders of the world as they make decisions for their own countries and for the world at large. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we are so thankful that we can gather together as one body to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for those who have decided to join us and gather in worship. We pray that in this day and on this earth, your kingdom will have no end. And we thank you, God, that you are with us now and forevermore. Thank you, God, for being our living Savior, for being our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. All of these prayers we lift up to you in the name of Jesus and through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. This morning's scripture comes to us from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 1 to 18. Hear now these words. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan, and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Sire to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did in its midst. And afterwards, I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and made the sea come upon them and cover them. And your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards, you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of Jordan, they fought with you, and I handed them over to you, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. King Balak sent and invited Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam, therefore he blessed you. So I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you, and also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I handed them over to you. I sent a hornet ahead of you, which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your power. I gave you a land on which you had not labored, and towns that you had not built, and you live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive yards that you did not plant. Now therefore, revere and serve the Lord in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, Choose the day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did these great signs in our sight. 
The Lord our God protected us along all the way that we went and among all the people for whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we, will, we also will serve the Lord. The Lord is our God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There is so much to unpack in this scripture this morning. There are so many different ways that a few minute sermon could go. But I want to address just a couple of things that I think stand out to most of us in 21st century United States of America. And that is this idea that God gave certain lands or a land to a certain people and drove out the other people. I think it's important for us to understand that these stories that we read in Joshua, uh, as I mentioned last week, were many, many of them were folk tales that were passed in. They weren't meant to necessarily, necessarily be historical fact of exactly how everything happened. But these stories within Joshua are meant to be stories to preserve the faith and the religion and culture of a certain people. So in Joshua 24, we are reading this story from the viewpoint of the Israelites, from the viewpoint of Joshua and God's people through Joshua, the Israelites. So when we see that God gave the land to the Israelites and drove out the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, and all that, we are just getting one side of the story. We don't know what the side of the story of the Amorites are, the Perizzites, or the Hittites, or the Jebusites. That's not listed in here necessarily as their viewpoint. This is the viewpoint of the Israelites. This is the story of the Israelites coming in to the promised land. And so in here, we have to deal with a very uncomfortable fact that things are written in a way that we may feel the hairs on the back of our neck stand up because it just doesn't jive with how we believe today and what we strive to do. We as citizens of the United States and the European settlers came over here hundreds of years ago. There were already people in this land. And we have a story that we tell. We have a story that has been passed down from generation to generation. But I learned in grade school about the first Thanksgiving, about settling here, about the relationship, uh, relationship of the European settlers with the native people here on this land. And as we go on, we realize that our side of the story is not altogether accurate. That our side of the story presents it from our viewpoint. But we hear now another side of that story. And it isn't necessarily about God handing over a land to people, but people taking lands in the name of God. And I think that's an important difference that we need to really, really settle with. That there's a difference between God giving us something and us as humans taking something in the name of God. But deeper than that in this scripture, God is challenging the Israelite people to face the facts of how did they survive? How were they blessed? Here's this entire litany given to the Israelites from um, Abraham, or actually before uh, Terah and his sons, who lived in another land, who worshipped other gods, and the whole genealogy all the way down to what was then the present day. God is saying, who did this? You did not do this yourselves. You are not living in a land that you built and cultivated. You are not living in the homes that you built. But you are living in other people's places. 
How did you survive? This food that you did, you did not do on your own. My hand was in it. It is me. I am the one who created you. I am the one who sanctified you. I am the one who has protected you and provided for you. We as humans like to think that we pull up ourselves by the bootstraps, as the saying goes, and that we are self-made and that we take care of ourselves and that what we have is what we earned and what we built ourselves. But this scripture here points out to us that none of us goes about life on just our own. That none of us is completely self-made. That everything that we have started with someone else. And we have to recognize that that someone else is God. God has placed us in this time and in this place for a purpose. And God did not place us and then forget about us. God did not create humans to do this thing called life alone and on our own. But we've all been influenced by other people that God has placed in our life, that God has provided in our lives to get us going. Whether it is our parents or relatives or friends who raised us. Whether it is somebody, a high school counselor, who help give us a start in life and encourage us to pursue um, a dream that we have that we did not think that we would be able to attain. Whoever it was, we've all gotten this far in life by the help of other people. And other people have gotten this far in life because of our help. Because God has placed us in their path as well. It's a two-way street. We work interdependently one with another. When, when the Bible talks about God has given us this, that, or the other, it isn't just rain down from heaven and it's there. It's by putting other people in our path. God providing avenues to other people to help us along. And it is important for us to see this. And then at the end it says, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When I was growing up, above my parents' bed, in their bedroom, I had that saying, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I always thought that that was a neat saying. Little did I know it was actually a, a Bible verse. It didn't have a Bible verse with it. It was just a plaque. It was a black plaque with gold lettering on it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, this is a challenge. God isn't saying, you have to serve me. God is giving us the choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And then God goes on and says, if you're not going to serve me, then serve this God. Serve this over here. What is it in our life that gives us the choice of what we're going to serve here or choose God? We all have choices. We all have different choices. We all have different things in our life that we can choose to serve as our God as opposed to the God who gave us life. And we have to make that choice. But we also have to admit and recognize that we are not here on this earth if it were not for God. That we have not gotten this far in this life had it not been for God. So God deserves our praise. God deserves our sincerity. God deserves our worship. God deserves our loyalty and our faith. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and our house, my house, we will serve the Lord. South Park Christian Church has made the commitment to serve God in many different ways. God has called us to a ministry starting in 1969, and our ministry is still going strong. As it is with many other churches, we have chosen to serve God. And we choose to serve God by reaching out and being the hands and feet of Christ to all those whom we encounter. Who will you serve today? I invite you to serve the God who created you, who loves you, and who abides with you now and forever.
Amen. God, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by the things we have said and done, and by the things we have left unsaid and undone. Forgive us, God, and create in us a clean heart, and renew our spirit so that we may become instruments of your peace, of your love, and of your justice. Our sins we confess to you. And with a humble heart, ask that you would forgive us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance. There is nothing, nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Neither life nor death, 
nor powers, nor authorities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else. For God's love for us is unconditional, and we are a forgiven people. At this point in the video, if you have not grabbed something to take communion with, bread and juice, cracker and milk, coffee and donut, whatever it is, I invite you to pause this video. You can go to your kitchen, get whatever it is that you want, come back and resume this video as we as the body of Christ gather around this table. Because when we do so, we gather around and we remember that it was on the night that he was portrayed, that Jesus took the bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which has been broken for you. Likewise, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, for this is the cup of the new covenant, which has been poured out for you and for all people. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Please pray with me. God of life, we ask you that you pour out your spirit upon this bread and this cup, the emblems that people are holding at home. Make for them the very real presence of you in our lives today, that as we partake of the elements within our hands, we will have an encounter with you, a life-changing, spirit-changing encounter with you, the giver of life, the giver of all life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you, take the bread, take and eat. Take the cup, the cup of hope, take and drink. And now, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught, praying, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please share Christ's peace via text, email, phone calls, or the mailing of handwritten notes in addition to greeting one another in person. Ecclesiastes 3 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. We are in a season when it is time to refrain from embracing. So please be creative in ways to greet one another that does not include physical contact so we can help keep everyone healthy and safe. And now, receive this blessing. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands or feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ looks compassion into the world. Yours are the feet with which Christ walks to do good. And yours are the hands through which Christ blesses the world. 
So go now in peace and love to serve the world in the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Our worship has ended. Let our service begin. And may the peace of Christ be with you now and always. Amen. Everything went so smoothly. Everybody was so kind and polite. Um, and the exciting thing was that we had a 90% voter turnout rate, which means 90% of those registered to vote here actually voted. Now, 81% of those people voted early. And so while it was steady throughout the day, it wasn't overly busy, and all the poll workers were able to keep up with everything, and they did a magnificent job. So I, it, I still, it is such an honor for this, uh, for our church to be a polling site and be able to provide that space. And it is always a privilege to work with them. Pledge Sunday was two weeks ago. Uh, so thank you to all who have sent in your pledges for 2021. If you still have not sent in your pledges for 2021, please do so. You can either email Carol with your pledge. Please include your name in the amount so she can record it. Or you can mail it into the church. It doesn't need to be on an official pledge card. If you just write it on a piece of paper, your name and your pledge for 2021, uh, Carol will accept it. And she comes to the church about once a week to pick up the mail. So that's when she will receive it. So if you've not done that, please do so. There is still time. Uh, next Saturday, November 14th from 12 to 1, we will be having another drive. We've, been, uh, we've had three drives for loaves and fishes. This one is going to be for Montclair Elementary School. It's going to be from 12 to 1 here at the church. The school is in, is in uh, need of especially uh, hand sanitizer and sanitizing wipes. Um, there may be some other stuff. I think we've put that um, in an email, our Friday newsletter. Um, but please, uh, if you would like to donate to that, please come to the church next Saturday between 12 and 1. Drop that off and it will also be an opportunity to see one another again. Um, Sunday, the Discipleship Sunday School class is meeting via Zoom on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, Renee and or Kevin sends out the Zoom link sometime on Saturdays. And then I can mail email to the congregation uh, Saturday evening or Sunday morning. The Reverend Kevin Baker Rooks leads the discipleship class. And then the, um, the uh, singers class, led by Alicia Gagnon, uh, meets Sunday mornings at 10 via FaceTime. So if you'd like to join that class, please contact me and I will let um, Alicia know she can get you hooked in with that class. On Wednesdays, we have our pastor's weekly check-in at 7 p.m. Um, I usually send out the Zoom link to that sometime on Wednesday, so please know that you are invited to, do, uh, to join in with that. If you are um, in the hospital or an assisted living facility and you would like a pastoral care, please contact me. Each facility is working with different regulations right now. There's a possibility that I can come in and see you, and there's also a possibility that I can't. If I cannot come to see you, I will check with the chaplain's department of that institution and arrange for a chaplain's visit for you. But if you would like a visit from me, I'm happy to do so if I'm allowed into the uh, facility. If you're at home and you'd like me to come visit you, I'm willing to do that if we can, um, if the weather is nice and we can sit outside with our masks on to protect one another. But I'm available to you 
by email and by phone, um, and also for an in-person um, visit if, if everything works out. So please contact me in the church office or on my cell phone or through email, and we will make those arrangements. Every Sunday when we worship together in person here in the sanctuary, we have time in our worship service where we can uh, worship the Lord through the giving of our tithes and our, and our offerings. Obviously, we cannot do that right now, but we still encourage you to send in your tithes and offerings to the church. The church still has financial obligations that we need to meet, and so we are so thankful and appreciative of the generosity of everyone, and we just pray that that continues and continues on into the future. If you're not a member of South Park Christian Church and you'd like to give us a gift, you can go to Givelify, look for South Park Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Charlotte, North Carolina, and you can give through Givelify. Again, thank you for joining us for worship service. Today is November 8th, 2020. This is South Park Christian Church. I'm Pastor Bruce Baker, a pastor of South Park. Thank you. Have a good week. God bless.